Jesus is the potter. Our hearts are the clay. Those who trust Jesus will put their heart within his hands. He knows exactly what he's doing. You have to trust him. It will hurt in moments, but there's a plan and a purpose for all that God does in us. He knows all of your trauma, all of your pain, your bondage. He knows the weight of your sin. And God is here to deliver you, to transform you. But you have to make him Lord of your life by admitting that you don't have it all figured out. Cry out to Jesus with all your heart and he'll become the potter of your heart. Allow him to make it into his beautiful masterpiece, his new creation. Cutting out the things, sin and wickedness and other desires of your heart that do not please God. It's an everyday process, a sanctification, a walk with Jesus. When you sin, you get right back up and you keep going to your potter, to your Lord, to your maker, continuing to place your heart in his hands. He will continue to mold you and shape you, as I said, through your hard fires and trials. Your patience and your faith will be tested, but many rewards will be waiting for you, and the glory of God will be over you as he continues to mold you and shape you into that beautiful masterpiece, and then you will have the power to go and help other hearts to get to know their maker and their creator, so they too can be freed from sin from generational curses that have been on mankind since the beginning. Draw near to God. He loves you and he cares for you. Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6 through 9 All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind our sins are swept away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have given us over to our sins. Yet you, Lord, our Father, we are the clay, you are the potter, we are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. Oh, look on us, we pray, for we are all your people. There are so many deep lessons of the heart that most people won't even know unless they go to Jesus for understanding. Jesus has the power to counsel you and to heal your heart in all things, in all areas of your life that you have felt in bondage of. He is there to answer all the unanswered questions that your heart and your soul has been seeking in silence. God has these answers for you. He wants to give them to you. Cry out to him with all your heart. Put your heart in his hands and watch as he molds and shapes you into the beautiful masterpiece that he's planned for you all along. He has an important purpose for your life. Not only will he heal things of your heart like trauma and answer things of your heart that you've been wondering for many years, he will help you reconcile your life and rebuild it in areas and places that you can't even imagine, but that have the power to bring healing power to your families because this is God's work. His work is beautiful and perfect. Trust Jesus. The Potter and the Clay Jeremiah chapter 18 1 through 11 The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house and there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, making something at the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred into hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord? Look, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. The instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up, to pull down, and to destroy it, if that nation against whom I have spoken churns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I thought to bring upon it. 
in the instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to build and to plant it. If it does evil in my sight, so that it does not obey my voice, then I will relent concerning the good with which I said I would benefit it. Now, therefore, speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I am fashioning a disaster and devising a plan against you. Return now, every one from his evil way, and make your ways and your doings good. Jeremiah chapter 29, 11-13 For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. When Jesus forms a heart into the likeness of his heart, it's going to be painful in moments because God says that we must decrease and let him increase. That means that Jesus is going to be the potter of our heart and he is the one that's going to mold us and shape us and he will cut the things out of us that are displeasing to him, which is evil, sinful, wicked behaviors. And it's a blessing. It's a gift. We just become like a 2.0 version of ourself when God gets a hold of us. A new creation that he sees fit for his kingdom, for his work that he wants you to do here on earth.